rating plus one two three plus x item hash scp 318 object class safe special containment procedures scp 318 is to be kept in the center of a chamber at least five meters by eight meters by five meters resting on a hydraulic lift to allow examination of the underside of the device. The door to this chamber is to be kept locked at all times, with access codes available to any Level 3 or higher staff, with access by personnel of Level 2 clearance or below requiring approval from at least one Level 4 staff member. Instances of SCP-318-1 are to be kept completely wound, except during testing and stored in secure item storage. Unrolling or communicating with SCP-318-1 is prohibited outside testing, and all personnel interacting with SCP-318-1 are to be subjected to regular psychiatric evaluations until at least one month after the most recent interaction. Description SCP-318 appears similar to a small version of a crude rotary printing press, with a great deal of additional machinery attached at various locations. The device is composed primarily of a variety of hardwoods, with metallic parts made from brass, bronze, cast or wrought iron, copper, steel, and aluminum. SCP-318 in its entirety is approximately 3. 5 meters wide, 6 meters long, and 2 meters tall. A more complete physical description can be found in Addendum 31802. When a living human, or a human cadaver that has been dead less than 6 hours, is placed in the input box and the lid closed, SCP-318 activates, using an undetermined power source. Cameras placed inside with test subjects have not been recovered but video transmitted prior to their destruction shows data expunged, with the vocalizations of conscious subjects audible to observers outside the box. During the process, lids of both boxes lock in place such that any force sufficient to open them would likely also cause significant damage to SCP-318. Tests using this level of force are currently awaiting approval. SCP-318 remains active for approximately 5, 5, minutes per use, with exact time seemingly dependent upon the body mass and physical condition of the subject. After SCP-318 ceases activity, all covers unlock, the test subject is no longer present in the input box, and, scroll, designated SCP-318-1 is present in the output box. SCP-318-1 takes the form of a strip of paper 7 inches, 17, 8 centimeters, wide and 2 feet, 60, 1 centimeter, long, wrapped around a black enameled wooden dowel 1 inch, 2, 5 centimeters, in recent diameter and 8 inches, 20, 3 centimeters, long. The dowel and paper appear entirely normal though testing reveals the presence of human DNA, matching that of converted subject. Present in the paper, this scroll contains the memories and consciousness of the test subject, who is able to communicate when SCP-318-1 is at least partially unrolled by causing drawings and or writing to appear on the paper. These marks only appear on the side of the paper that faces inward when rolled up and are generally consistent with the penmanship and artistic ability of the subject, though the quality of drawings improves markedly when SCP-318-1 can see what it is depicting. Subjects stored on instances of SCP-318-1 report the ability to feel the scroll as if it were their body, expressing a corresponding form of pain when the paper is cut, torn, burned data expunged, or otherwise distressed, significant damage appears to render SCP-318-1 inoperative in some way, as once the scroll is damaged beyond a certain extent, generally the compromise of at least percent of the paper's surface, subjects are unresponsive and display no further activity, 
It is currently unknown whether this is because the copy of the subject has been destroyed, or because their mode of communication has been cut off. In addition, so long as SCP-318-1 is at least partially unrolled, subjects are apparently able to perceive their environment visually and orally, with an acuity consistent with an average human adult. Requests for testing on blind and or deaf subjects are currently pending approval. Personas stored on instances of SCP-318-1 respond as would be expected from the original subject, and have full access to the subject's memory, as well as a complete memory of their time stored on SCP-318-1. They are unable to exert any direct influence on objects or personnel. And though they can make requests of a reader, the reader is under no obligation or compulsion to accede to these requests. Testing has shown no mimetic properties in writings or drawings on SCP-318-1, and subjects do not appear to be more persuasive than they were while alive. However, some staff have through prolonged interaction displayed sympathy towards SCP-318-1 subjects, such Individuals should be transferred to non-sentient SCP items, or terminated if a transfer is not feasible. Addendum 318-01 SCP-318 was recovered by Foundation agents on 20. In 